Today it's the turn of the Midlands and Silvana Franco, she is our chef guide today. Now, of course, we know, Silvana, that the Italians are truly passionate about food. Yeah, everyone knows that, don't they? They love it. Is it true, of course, that Italians from the Midlands feel exactly the same way? Well, I think there's an awful lot to get inspired about in the Midlands. Amazing amount of fantastic foods we saw when we were there. Yeah, well, there you go, you see. So a true Italian here with just that kind of Midlands accent to go with it. Now, we're in for a bit of a treat today yes. because you went to see so many people. It seems that we've got this real kind of meat feast and you went to visit a real true traditional butcher. I'm from a large Italian family so I'm passionate about good food and we've come to the Midlands which is an area I know very well because I'm from Derby myself and we're here to meet some local food heroes who feel the same way I do. This region has so much to offer from tangy stilton to Lincolnshire sausages as well as delicious veg and hand in hand with the food comes spectacular scenery. You can't go wrong. Ledbury is one of the finest of Herefordshire's famous black and white towns. Looking at its wonderful old timbered high street, you can certainly see why. I'm off to meet a food hero who, like me, has an Italian background. Joe Quarti runs the town's rare breed butchers. So, Joe, how did the shop come about? The previous owner uh, decided to retire. Yeah and the traditional breeds meat marketing company looked to take the shop over. Yes. They are not butchers, they basically coordinate between small producers of traditional and rare breeds and independent butchers. They then asked me if I'd be interested in coming to Ledbury and uh, managing the shop for them. And you said yes please. I actually said, you know, the first question was where's Ledbury? So the thing that's special about the shop is the fact that it's all about rare breeds. Is it 100% rare breed? Not 100% yet. But that's your aim? That's the aim. And why is it? Why is it so important to you? Because we want to be able to demonstrate to people that these animals are not only worth preserving and keeping the strains and the lines going, but they're actually jolly good to eat as well. If all these rare breeds, if they're produced properly, uh, one wonders why they're becoming rare, but it's because they don't make the sort of profits that the supermarkets want. How far afield do you go? Within a 30 mile radius. Right. Uh, quite and, a and some few of them. Are really in. small producers, aren't they? Like yes. we're talking like 40 pigs and things 40 like pigs a year. They're fed better as well, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they get fed on all sorts of things. I mean, let's say I know one lady and her pigs were coming in really sweet and they were being fed on the sweet corn oh, from the see? farm next door. <laughs> and, and it just made them that much better. And so, do you know the people that come into the shop, do they fully appreciate what it's all about? Do you, most do you, of them do, do, yeah. customers are interested? Yeah, most customers are very interested. They'll come in and say, what beef have you got this yeah, week? Yeah. What lamb have you got this week? And it's nice when you get something a bit different. Yeah. And they say, Oh, we'll try some of that, you know. So, Joe, we're not just talking about the cuts of meat. You make your own sausages, and it's not just sausages. There's all these steak sausage pies rolls, and the cheese, steak pies, and they're chicken your pies. own recipe. My recipes, yeah. And are they a hit then? Uh, yes. You sell a lot of pies. Yeah. And so that must, so you can feel very happy that you know you are using every part of the animal. Th that is the good thing. Thank you very much, Joe. Now, look, can we have a little taste of that roast chicken Please over do. there? So this is one of your lovely ultra. Free range. range. And you've roasted it up for us today. It's very moist. It's delicious. Thank you very much, John. You looked a very happy lady there. Was that because you were working with a, another Italian? You know when you start to talk to somebody and his real passion and his enthusiasm just really shines through and that's what it was like with Joe. I think that's shown, doesn't yeah. it? There's no question about that. He's on that. a mission. He sent us here the guinea fowl and we've got the lovely free-range chicken. I've got to say, that looks beautiful. Why don't we just do a simple chicken Caesar salad? Just crack on with it, shall I? Just please. Isn't she great to work with? So the first thing I'm going to do is just take the legs off, and this is a bit more gamey. Oh, goodness me, yes. I'm looking forward to trying this now. This should be uh, really tasty. Right, what I've got here is what we call the crown. So all it is is leaving the two breasts on the bone, like that. So, there, so let's just pop this straight in the pan. 
can hear that immediately. Right, so where do we stand at the moment? We've got a nice... Nice. Oh, that looks lovely. It's got a beautiful natural colour, very yellow. Look at that, that's absolutely lovely. We've always got to think about what the purpose is of Local Food Heroes. And of course, from our point of view, it's a question of perhaps looking at some of these smaller kind of suppliers and how they're really offering, taking everything from their local community and giving it back to the community. I think community's really got a lot to do with it. Because otherwise we can get carried away with thinking, no, it can only be somebody who's, who's using produce with a 20 mile radius, yeah. rather than somebody who's drawing in flavors from across the world that nobody's ever experienced before. Good point. For me, that's equally yeah. important. Right, so this is just going to be nicely roasted to beautiful and tender. We'll see you in a minute. Today we are sampling the wonderful delights of the Midlands and of course with our Italian Midland cook, Silvana Franco. She's been crisscrossing the whole of this region, tasting all of the wonderful delights of the local food heroes. So here we are cooking some of this wonderful meat from Joe Aguati at Landinabo Farm. So how are we getting on with that? Yeah, so now that's ready to assemble. The chicken is cooked, so I'll get on with it. Fantastic. Oh, also spinach as well. You wouldn't do me a quick favour. Yeah. Just put that into a little knob of butter little and we'll lightly them. soften that. So well, you've seen, of course, the guinea fowl out to the oven. Quite a nice crispy skin there. We're just going to leave that to rest for a moment. And let me show you what I've done actually with this lovely little stew here because we started off with the uh, the leg meat we took the legs and we took the thighs you'll notice all i've done is cut them into little strips off the bone so this is going to be like a little stew which is going to be really nice it's a great way of doing it it's not over fussy it's sort of really let the ingredients speak for themselves exactly that i'm very lucky got some nice uh, what we call giro mushrooms the wild mushrooms and i'm gonna let them poach Rather than fry them, because I don't want that butteriness in them. And Silvana is cooking off some spinach for me, I yes, believe. Yes, that's here. That's juice, but I'll get oh, that's it plenty. Again. That's plenty there. That looks fabulous. This looks great. And I just want to put this nice little ragu and the centre of the plate. But I think, Joe, obviously, from what I've seen, uh, looking at your experiences of, of work, of, well, say, working with him, experiencing those great flavours and, and uh, and seeing just how he produces all of this. And seeing the animals running around on the farm, you know, they really are very oh, free range. No question Lots about of exercise that. they get. Let's just sit that just across the top of the ragu. And then you have two nice dishes. Mm. We've got a nice Caesar salad to start off on our tasting. And we'll go on to a nice guinea fowl dish with its own okay. little ragu. Guinea fowl I felt had been lost over That's the right. Years. It's now been reintroduced. So these guys are all about the traditional breeds. I think it's time to okay. taste, isn't okay. it? And when you showed me that chicken, it did look very, very good. You now, as you were cutting it, you could just see them that how moist it was. Yeah, definitely. 
bit chewy. Chewy, well, have we become... Used to bland pappy chicken. Exactly. Maybe, maybe that's it, yeah. But it hasn't got that texture anymore. So, you know, if I've got something here, I'd much have to work that little bit harder. To get the flavour. To, to get the flavour. Mm. Nice right. dressing. So there's number one. Mm. Right, let's have a look over here. Now... It looks completely different from a bog standard guinea pig. Oh, there's no two ways about that. Yeah. You know, we saw that. You can just feel it as you're... But that's, you know what I mean? That's because work here. they've been allowed all this space. But look at that again. You said about moistness. Yeah. It's there, isn't it? Still got it. Mm. We've still got it. And then I want to taste a little bit of that leg. Oh, straight away. Mmm. Mmm. It's got loads of flavour. Packed with flavour. It's not... Beautiful and moist to eat. But really and truly, it's the flavour of the guinea fowl that's coming through. Yeah, it really is. That's why they're the pure breeze and so good. I'm glad that they've got a nice, a good, tasty guinea fowl going on here. This is a pretty good start, I think. Right now, of course, we're going to have a little bit of a rest because the next one is just going to be cooking for us. Time for us to taste. You've got a real treat. 